Hey everybody, um, so today I just wanted to do a little video on how we can do asynchronous, um, basically launch asynchronous code in LabVIEW um, programmatically um, so we can launch um, maybe different processes that we want to either just spawn up um, or stuff that we may want to launch that may take a while. We can do other things and then we can come back later and collect the results. Um, so I just wanted to show a basic template you can use for launching um, asynchronous code. Um, so um, here I just have a static VI reference. Um, so I am, yeah, you can just, uh, if you want to create one of these, right, you can just um, open up quick drop, static VI reference, drop that there, um, and you can, um, basically link it to a VI. You can even drag a VI in, right? I can drop that in there and it then becomes linked to that VI. So um, static uh, VI, um, you know, launching that works well. Um, it basically puts the VI in memory, makes sure that it's automatically detected as included. Um, so especially with like, you know, when you're creating a VI, you don't need to add it that VI to the always included section, it being in a static reference, um, loads it into memory automatically and includes it. Um, and then we're just using a property node to get the name of this VI and passing that into this open VI reference function. So that is one way you can do that. Um, if you delete this, um, you can see it's also asking for a VI path. So we also could load in the path to a VI um, instead of statically linking this. Um, that way you can dynamically launch the VI. Um, there's just a couple things you have to be care careful of. Um, first off, there is this type uh, specifier. Um, so when launching uh, code this way, um, this type specifier has to match the VI that you're launching or else this is going to throw an error. Um, so um, you can't just launch any VI this way. Um, you can maybe have some logic that passes in different type specifiers based off of different configurations or something like that, but you can't just arbitrarily launch anything with this type specifier. Um, now, if you follow like a good standard and all of your stuff that you launch always follows a similar pattern, then yeah, you can do something like that. Um, and then when you're building an EXE, you will want to make sure that you um, include those File those VIs as always included um, because they're being dynamically called. But using this method, we do not have to do that. So um, in our open VI reference, um, we're passing in the type specifier um, refnum, which you can get this a couple different ways. Um, sorry, Lavi's taking a sec. All right, so I'll just delete that for example. So you can see if I uh, right click here, um, I get basically this empty one. Uh, if I want to link it to something, I can just drop in a VI and it will match that um, type specifier. So I don't need to necessarily drag in the VI that I'm launching, but I need to drag in something that matches the connector pane of the VI I want to launch. Um, <clears throat> and then here we have our options. So um, I have this set to hex display. Um, so hex um, and then an 80 is going to be what's called call and forget which means we call the VI and then we kind of forget about it, right? We don't, we're not going back to collect data, um, you know, we're just launching it. Um, so in this case, we'll just open the VI reference, um, use this start asynchronous call function, um, and this shows the connector pane. Um, this will actually update, and I'll show you this on the next VI, um, to match the connector pane that we have here so we can get data in and out. And then we're just going to close that reference afterwards so we don't get memory leaks. So I'm um, going to, and I can show you this VI I have here that I'm going to launch. Um, all it is is just a simple uh, event loop. So every 100 milliseconds, we're just going to pull a random number and plot it until I click the X in the corner. So really pretty simple. Um, so let's go here. And I'm just going to launch two instances of this. So I run this, and you can see I actually only got one instance. I didn't get the two that I asked for. When I close out of this, um, it then launches the second one, and I can then close out of that. So 
The reason why it didn't launch both at the same time would be the execution settings on that VI. So if you go open the VI properties and go to execution, um, there's this reentrancy section. So by default, your VIs are gonna be non-reentrant execution. That means that only one instance of that VI can be running at a time. Um, now, if for certain, you know, depending on what you're trying to do, um, so that's a lot of the times how you want your VIs to be, right? You don't want it to necessarily be able to be cloned. Um, you just want it to be a single use. But there are also lots of times where you want code to be cloned any amount of times, right? You know, maybe you're popping up, you know, you have a way people can link different data in the software and launch like different asynchronous views of that data and whatnot. And, you know, so they can, you know, view what they want to view while certain things are happening, stuff like that. Um, so here we can change between these different clone settings. Um, so we have the option of shared clone, reentrant execution, and pre-allocated clone, reentrant execution. So these are pretty similar. Um, the main thing is that your shared clone is going to, like as the name suggests, share clones. So for example, if I launch this process, it's going to launch a clone. Um, if that, that clone stops and I go to launch another of that process, um, it's just going to reuse the old clone instead of launching a second clone or a third clone or on and on and on. So, but if that first clone is still busy and it's running and I go to launch a second, it's going to create a second clone. So, um, yeah, can, can keep your memory down a little bit um, because you're able to reuse your clones. Um, Pre-allocated, basically every time you launch, you get it, your own, you know, a new clone. So even if clone one stops, um, and you go to launch clone two, it's going to launch clone two, clone three, clone four, right? So that's really the difference. Um, but yeah, reentrancy just basically allows the VI to be run multiple places at the same time. So yeah, for this example, I'm just gonna set it to pre-allocated. Um, depending on what you're trying to do, you may choose one or the other. Um, so yeah, let's uh, save this VI. And now let's go launch four instances of our process. So you can see I get four graphs. They're all running asynchronously. Um, yeah, and it works just how I intended it to work. Um, you can see my VI that called them is actually done executing, and this code is running all on its own. So yeah, and then I can go and I can close each individual one of those. So that would be our first demo. Um, that would be how you can do a simple call and forget. Um, launching clones and settings you'll want to include on your VI to make that um, be able to launch multiple at the same time. So now let's look at um, launching with some controls. So here um, I have a slightly different VI. Um, so I've taken this one, it's mostly the same as the other one. Um, in this case, though, I'm generating a sine wave, and I've added controls for the frequency and the amplitude. So I can control that, and then I'm just graphing that sine wave. Um, here are those controls. So you can see on the connector pane, I've linked both of the controls. So now on my VI, everything looks the same. So I'm still got this static reference to this control or to this VI. Um, I've got uh, I'm pulling the name, uh, opening the VI. And you can see here, now when I use this uh, start asynchronous call function, it's shown these two terminals on the connector pane. And I can wire stuff in. So in this case, I'm setting the frequency to one, and I'm setting the amplitude to be based off of the number of iterations. Um, and that's really all that's different. Now I can pass data into this VI, um, so I can control how it operates. So let's launch four instances of this. Um, let me just close out of context help. There you go. So I get four separate VIs, um, each one with a different amplitude. So you can see the controls have, you know, this one has one, two, three, four. The, si the graphs are set to auto scale, but you can see this one, the max is three, this one, the max is two, one, and four. So they did get the different amplitudes. Um, so yeah, there you go. And obviously I've launched these. I can then also go, you know, use the controls, um, you know, however I want, but yeah. So now I've launched a VI and passed data into it as I've launched it. Um, now let's look at how you can um, launch a VI and collect data from it. Um, but yeah, so launch, call, and collect. 
sweet. Um, so yeah, th this format is going to be mostly the same. Um, so I've got this VI now um, that is generating just a random number. Um, this time though, I'm going to pass out the total number of iterations. So every time this loop iterates, I'm gonna t read the count, and this is going to output the total amount of iterations at the end. And I've mapped that on the connector pane there. Um, so yeah, I'm just you know statically linked to that. You can see my type specifier shows that uh, extra um, uh, indicator on the connector pane. Um, and my option is gonna be different. So here I'm using 100. Um, that's what you're going to use for a call and collect setup, meaning that you want to call the VI asynchronously, and then you want to be able to read back data from it later. Um, so that's the only difference as we open this VI. We're still gonna use the start asynchronous call function. Um, but this time I'm not immediately closing those references like you can see. So I'm just building up an array here. Um, and then on this VI, I'm using this wait on asynchronous call. So this is going to wait until data is available on this terminal. So um, this will wait until that asynchronous VI has finished running and then I can pull the data out of it. And then once I've done that, then I can close the reference because I no longer need that VI. Um, and then afterwards I'm just showing um, all of those total iteration counts there. So let's go run this. Let's go set it to four instances. So I've launched my four clones. You can see they're all counting up their number of iterations. Um, so I can close out of that, close out of that, close out of there, and this one will close out there. And then I get all four of those um, iteration counts back. Um, now, the one thing to be careful of is, you know, in this case, right, I'm not keeping track of order at all, right? Which VI I closed when and whatnot, you know, I'm not keeping track of that. Um, sometimes you will want to do that, though, so you'll want to be careful to make sure you know which VIs you're pulling data from if you've got lots of clones, you know, running. But, yeah, that would be how you can do a um, simple uh, 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 call and collect so you can get data back from your VIs. Um, I wanted to show one other thing. Um, so on this VI, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to set it to show the menu bar. Sweet. So now I'm just going to go launch two clones of this VI. So my two clones are running. I want to just give you some advice on, and tips on kind of debugging clones. So if I go to my original, um, I can see that it's not actually executing. It's in a run state, but it's not, the code isn't actually executing on the original. Um, so, you know, if I go and, you know, maybe I don't have that open, but I go open this, um, you know, it's loaded in memory, but it's not actually executing. Its clones are what's actually executing. Um, so if I'm debugging, I may want to be able to open a certain clone, especially like in this case, you know, the clones popped up because they were user interface clones. You can have clones that never actually pop up. They're all just sub VIs that handle stuff in the background. And sometimes you want to be able to debug and dive into those individual clones. So if you want to open a certain clone, um, you can go to view. If you open the, uh, the original VI, right, um, I can go to view, browse relationships, and then reentrant items. And I can see both the reentrant original, which is grayed out because that's what I've opened here. Um, but I can also see the two clones that I've launched. And however many clones I've launched will show up here. I can then click that specific clone that I want, and it will pop it up there. And then I can go in and you know do, use debugging tools. I can use highlight execution. I can use breakpoints. I can use probes, all that stuff. So it, you know as long as you have uh, debugging enabled, that is. Um, but yeah, that way, you know, in this case, right, stuff's already popped up on the screen. If I wanted to, I could just show the block diagram. But if I have stuff that's just running as a sub VI in the background and never actually pops up, this is a good way to do debugging. Just go to browse relationships, reenter items, and then select the specific clone that you want to debug. Um, and then you can do that as it's running, um, which works great. Um, but yeah, that would be um, how you can do um, 
basically asynchronous launching in LabVIEW. Um, there is one other way actually in which you can do that. Um, and I'll show you that right here. So in this case, I'm going to just open AVI and then I'm going to use VI server to run the VI. Um, so let's show this and run VI. So that is another way in which you can um, run code asynchronously is I can use VI server and I can pass in a VI reference. Um, one advantage to this is you don't necessarily have to match the type specifier, um, right? This can run any VI regardless of its connector pane. Um, there are, you know, some downsides, right? Um, this one, I don't really have control over, um, you know, uh, you know, passing data in and out is a little trickier. You can, right? So you can go and read and write to different kind of controls and whatnot. Um, and, you know, you can do all that. Um, it just takes a little more effort programmatically. This is a little easier to just, you know, wire stuff in. Um, and then also, you know, I actually don't want an invoke node. Um, you know, if I had something that maybe didn't automatically, you know, pop up, um, I could run it and pass in a property node and go to front panel window and state, change to write. Um, and go to standard or if I want it maximized or whatever. So, um, yeah, you can do stuff like that. That way I can, you know, pop open my VI and I can run it if the VI wasn't set to automatically pop up or something. So that would be the second way in which you can launch VIs. I find that I rarely use this method. Um, I kind of like this one, especially that it enforces the type specifier. Um, that helps me catch little errors and stuff in my code if I don't set up things correctly. Um, so I kind of like that. Um, and the ability to launch things is either a call and collect or call and forget and being able to just use a simple connector pane for data in and out, I really like. Um, but both of these work, both of these are valid methods to launch uh, VIs asynchronously. So yeah, thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.